Hi, this is Dr. Whiting. Today I want to take a few minutes to talk to you about the number one cause of death in America. And this is in spite of all the exercise programs, preventive programs, medications, antihypertensives, antiarrhythmia, uh, anti blood clogging. Um, it's in spite of all the surgical procedures such as angioplasty, bypass surgery. Of course, I'm talking about the big daddy of all, heart disease, or the heart attack. In spite of all of these various methods, in, in spite of our 30-year war against cholesterol, more people have and more people die of heart disease in America than any other single cause of death. This may change over time because there are some uh, silent uh, uh, epidemics such as diabetes that are rapidly increasing and catching up with heart disease. But so far, in spite of all of medicine's efforts, heart disease still remains the number one cause of death around the world. In fact, in most industrialized nations. I want to tell you a little bit about why I feel this is the case. It's certainly not because medicine hasn't tried. Because uh, medicine has probably spent more research dollars on heart disease, uh, prevention, drug therapy, and surgical procedures than almost anything uh, else except perhaps for cancer treatment. And in spite of this, we're still relatively helpless in preventing the majority of heart disease. Now, for our purposes today, when we talk about heart disease, we're really talking about the heart attack. Okay? And this is caused almost exclusively, not always, but almost always, by a condition called atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis is a term that we use for the narrowing of the arteries leading from the chest cavity. And those arteries over time can fill up with what's called plaque. And plaque is made up of a variety of substances. And over a period of years or even decades, the artery begins to become smaller and smaller and smaller, reducing the flow of blood. If those arteries should get significantly occluded or blocked altogether, uh, a heart attack is almost guaranteed. Now, there have been a dozens and dozens of theories put forth as to why the arteries do this. Well, here's the first thing for you to think about. How come, if cholesterol causes this problem, which is what we're told, that's why in America and now spreading around the world is what I call the cholesterol mania or the cholesterol hysteria, uh, if cholesterol causes this problem, how is it that cholesterol only plugs up arteries and never veins? You see, there's never been one case of venal sclerosis in medical history because the veins never occlude or plug up. Uh, there are never mineral deposits in venal tissue. There are never cholesterol deposits in venal tissue. So why would this condition occur only in arteries? Well, there are several reasons for that. First of all, we have to look at the structure of the artery. An artery has three walls, an inner wall, an outer wall, and a middle wall of muscle. And that muscle is designed to constrict and pump the blood so that the blood pressure and flow is the same in the chest cavity as it is at the bottom of your feet. It is this muscle that is subject to attack or damage from what we call free radicals. And these free radicals proliferate throughout the bloodstream and get into the intima or inner lining of the artery wall and begin to alter the DNA or cell structure of that mineral of that uh, muscle wall. And it's for this reason that veins never have this problem because they don't have that middle wall of muscle to be damaged or to be compromised. Okay, so where do the free radicals come from that specifically attack the artery walls? Well, they probably come from a wide variety of sources, but we do know for sure that one of the major sources of the free radical that specifically damages the arteries comes from rancid or oxidized vegetable oils. Therefore, if you want to prevent heart disease, the single greatest thing that you can do is to eliminate all vegetable oils from your diet, excepting for monounsaturates, which would include olive oil, and to a lesser extent, canola oil, and the saturated fats, which in moderation are perfectly healthy. Since cholesterol is not the cause of this disease, we need to go back in time, before cholesterol uh, began to stick to your arteries. 
this free radical damage was taking place and when that happened the body began to lay down calcium inside the artery. That condition is called calcification of the arteries. And once the calcium is laid down on the artery, cholesterol, which normally flows through your bloodstream, begins to be ionically attracted to the calcium. Because only in the areas of calcification do we see cholesterol deposits. Cholesterol deposits don't occur in any other location, which is why you can have a stretch of artery and at this juncture you can have an almost 80% blockage and two inches away the artery is perfectly clear. And the reason for that is is that damaged, original damaged portion is going to set up the scenario for calcification and eventual cholesterol deposits. Now, prior to this the only way that we could eliminate that problem was either through surgical procedures uh, or through uh, some some drug therapy which generally speaking was ineffective and still is today however we have a method that is totally non-invasive that for a vast majority of people is extremely effective and that method is called chelation chelation has been around for a great number of years and up until very recently the only way you could get chelation therapy was intravenously that means you had to go somewhere pop open the arm and let them inter infuse or drip uh, uh, chelating agents into your into your bloodstream and that took anywhere between two and four hours and you had to do that uh, for several weeks now we have developed in recent years what we call an oral chelate and oral chelates contain the same amino acids used in the intravenous drip but we have now found a way to be able to buffer those amino acids so they're not damaged by the digestive system because that was the problem before uh, when you ingested these substances orally the, the digestive system broke them down and by the time they got to the bloodstream they were relatively ineffective as chelating agents fortunately um, nutritional and medical science has overcome that problem and there are many uh, great oral chelation formulas available today. If you're interested in finding out more about the oral chelate cardiovascular support formula that we developed here at our research center, you can contact us at healthyinformation.com. You can also contact us directly via email at askthedoc at healthyinformation.com. You can reach us by telephone at 1-888-454-8464. If cardiovascular disease is a concern for you, if cardiovascular disease runs in your family, or if you have been already diagnosed with early onset cardiovascular problems, you would probably do yourself a great deal of, uh, of good by exploring the possibilities of oral chelates and cardiovascular support formulas. This is Dr. Whiting. Thanks for listening.